So thank you, Sarah and, and Carolina. Um, these are my disclosures, which are important. And I should also emphasize that the data I will present comes from a couple of studies uh, which represent a multinational, multi-center collaboration uh, between centers in the USA and in Israel. And I know some of the investigators are here at this meeting. So as we all know, chronic constipation is a common and at times disabling condition. Traditional approaches such as changes in diet and use of laxatives are of limited efficacy and many sufferers feel unrelieved. Indeed, there's, there are some studies which suggest that up to 50% of patients feel dissatisfied with conventional therapies. However, we do have newer pharmacological approaches, and these are effective, but they may not be tolerated by some because of adverse events, and diarrhea in particular. So there is an un, continues to be an unmet need for novel approaches uh, to constipation management. The vibrating capsule is a two, consists of a two-piece shell, a flat motor, an electronic card, batteries, and a battery bridge. It is a smooth shell, so it's easy to swallow. And it has an inbuilt delay mechanism, which means that the capsule is not activated until six to eight hours before it is swallowed. In other words, until, in theory, it reaches the colon. And you can see its dimensions here. It comes with a base, which activates the capsule prior to ingestion, by delivering an electromagnetic signal activating the capsule and the activation signal is transmitted to the activation base uh, to the capsule. Preliminary data suggested that the vibrating capsule had a promotility effect in the colon and in phase one human volunteer studies uh, there was no safety problem and um, small studies in patients with both chronic idiopathic constipation and IBSC in phase two studies also suggested a clinical efficacy in terms of relief of constipation. So we uh, participated in a phase three randomized controlled trial uh, of 154 patients with chronic idiopathic constipation, each, uh, with 77 in each arm. As I mentioned, 16 centers, six in Israel, 10 in the US. It involved a two-week run-in without any medications for constipation. And those who were randomized to the active arm ingested two capsules per week for eight weeks. There was an additional two-week washout period, and patient diaries were used to record bowel movements and other constipation-related symptoms. The primary outcome uh, was a change from baseline in the weekly sp spontaneous complete bowel movement rate and improvement in quality of life, specifically an increase of at least one spontaneous bowel movement per week and one great improvement in quality of life on the PACQUAL score. So it was a combined responder outcome. We analyzed the best six of all the eight weeks, and of course we also analyzed the patient data for safety. This is the overall data, which shows the increase in spontaneous bowel movements from baseline, which is shown here, uh, to the active treatment period. And as you can see, for the active in blue and the sham in brown, there's no significant difference, or there's no, really no difference between the two groups. However, when we did a post hoc analysis, looking at both the phase two and phase three studies, uh, we did notice that if you looked at the responder rate for those who had uh, what we might describe as moderate to severe constipation, namely those who had um, more than one and less than 2.5 spontaneous bowel movements per week shown here, there seemed to be a much greater uh, responder rate. Not only for uh, the increase in spontaneous bowel movements, but also for change in Bristol stool scale, improvement in bloating, and improvement in straining. I will rem remind you, however, again, this is a post hoc analysis. So this suggested that there may be a subgroup within this population who may be a better responder uh, to this particular strategy. And that were those who had at least one and less than or equal to 2.5 spontaneous problems per week. So then we embarked on a pilot study increasing the dose by now giving five capsules per week. This is a non-controlled study in 25 patients with chronic idiopathic constipation, again using the same uh, respond or putative responder group who have greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to 2.5 spontaneous problems per week. Again, a two-week run-in without any medications, and then just five capsules per week for six weeks. Again, recorded patient diet for bowel movements and symptoms, and the primary endpoint was an increase 
how great a leak would do one complete spontaneous bowel movement per week for five of the six weeks compared to baseline. You will note that this time it's complete spontaneous bowel movement, which you would argue is a tougher endpoint. And this shows you the, shows you the results. Uh, this is looking at, of the, of the six weeks of the study, the improvement by at least one complete spontaneous bowel movement. This is the numbers who had that improvement and the percentages, as you can see, it ranged between 70 and 83%. And if you made it even tougher and increased up to at least two complete spontaneous bowels per week, you got responses which ranged from 50% to 62%. This is looking at the improvement in symptoms. This is for bloating, significant improvement over the study period, and straining, significant improvement over the study period, and a significant improvement in the Bristol stool scale and change from baseline over the six weeks. This is looking at the um, overall responder rate improvement of at least complete spontaneous bowel movement for five out of the six weeks, which was two thirds of the patients, or two complete spontaneous bowel movements, 50% of the patients. Again, remember, there's no control group in this study. It is a pilot study. And this compares the two studies, again, looking at this particular responder group. This is the <coughs> initial study which I showed you, showed the improvement uh, of about 2.1 in terms of complete spontaneous bowel movements, and this now is using the five capsule per week, an improvement of almost four uh, of complete spontaneous, in, the, in terms of the number of complete spontaneous bowel movements. Now, in terms of safety, in this, in both the five capsule study and in the two capsule study, there were no serious adverse events, there were no difficulties encountered in swallowing the capsule, there were no instances of capsule retention. <coughs> Some patients reported awareness of flight vibration, but actually this seemed to be equally common among patients who got the sham and the active capsule, so we're not quite sure exactly what that meant. So in conclusion, the vibrating capsule is accepted and well tolerated by sufferers with chronic constipation. Among those with moderate to severe constipation, two capsules per week appeared to be effective, but again I emphasize this was a post hoc analysis of a prospective study. In an uncontrolled, and again I emphasize uncontrolled study, five capsules per week appear to be more effective and were still well tolerated. And obviously, before we can make any conclusions with regard to either the dosing uh, or the effect, overall effectiveness as a strategy, we need further randomized study in this patient population with the dosing schedule. And these, this study is actually uh, already uh, underway. Thank you very much.